Hello everybody, this is Sinon44. I'm here to start a new segment with you all. And that is, I'm going to be reviewing an RPG Maker game. Today's RPG Maker game is 2003 game Hero Chronicles of Rose. Alright, the title screen music's not nothing to talk about. Let's get started with the intro. Oh no. The Terra theme from Final Fantasy VI. This is bad already. Come on, go a little faster. Oh, I made a comic on this. Hmm, apparently the dialogue should be a little bit better then. I certainly hope it is. Oh, come on, pick up the pace here. Ugh. Stupid little boat sing. Game looks like from a PlayStation 1 game with Super Nintendo Computer. That is the bad guy with the white face. I know. I'm I know, pretty lame. Alright, I'm not gonna make you guys watch any more of that intro. Let's just jump right into the game. Okay, tile sets. The graphics actually aren't that bad in this game. In fact they're pretty good, but the one problem is they don't match too much. You can see the character stands out very much from the actual tile sets. And I like the little bunny rabbits and the birds flying around. And also, there's a little petrified guy standing over there in a treasure chest, which I didn't actually bother to go after. Petrified guy doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, the main character also blinks when you're walking around. It's a great feature, but the only problem is, the character blinks way too damn long! Okay, this is pissing me off. Look at the shading on the bunny rabbit, and look at the shading on the grass. Very different. The graphics don't go together at all. In fact, this game feels like a scrapbook in many places. Some people out there are probably saying, But Sainon, those chipsets are pretty good. Yeah, the thing is, I'm almost positive this guy didn't make them himself, and even the chipsets don't go together, and they look overdone. Okay, into the battles. Thankfully, this guy allows me to kill the bunny rabbits. It's kind of lighten the mood a little bit. Here's one problem I have. The battle animations are actually pretty good. The battle music, however, sounds very uninspired, and uh, the second character, Lair, Leor, regains health. And also, ah! Ah! Turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off! Ugh, thank you. I'm not making you listen to that garbage again. The victory music is the worst song I think I've ever heard in an RPG Maker game. Warning! Very useless point battle at the beginning of the game. You fight this golem enemy. Okay, I'm not making you listen to the battle music either, because quite frankly, I don't like it. Okay, what's so bad about this golem enemy? He takes forever. Your specials do nothing to him. And he has about 10,000 health. I'm not even exaggerating. You do at most, maybe 20 damage, or 50 damage to this guy. And considering when you were hitting the bunny rabbits for about 300 or something, this is not excusable. Alright, 10 minutes later, finally killed him. Okay, the beginning of the game hasn't really impressed me too much. I see there's a little treasure over there, which I forgot to get. Okay, into the menu. Okay, the good thing about this game is apparently this guy uh, has items that you get from enemies that you can go and sell, which is a great idea. I've seen it used in other games before. Great idea. That's why he should have used it. And he did. Now for the first boss. Yes, apparently Alex, the RTP hero of Doom, which you see at the top, is a bad guy in this game for an interesting twist. But that doesn't really excuse his usage. In fact, that makes me want to kill him all the more. Lear warns me that this guy's no joke. However, to be honest with you, Considering that the first enemies are me killing bunny rabbits and seagulls, I really was not able to take this boss fight that seriously. And the author claims this game is a dark setting, which I'll get into later. Thankfully, he takes away Lear's um, health regeneration to actually make this game somewhat difficult. And I actually rather like this fight for a while. For a while. But it dragged on. The boss eventually uses cheap shit like this. Okay. Watch. Keep in mind that this is only 350 health. Yes! 350 hit points is his max. It does 258. What the hell? 
Or maybe that's 250. Oh, it's 253. Oops. But still, what the hell? Come on. It does also zero to layer. It really makes me wonder if this guy tested this. Ugh. By now, I've probably put all ten of you that are going to watch this to sleep, so i got to wake you back up. Okay, here we are. Killing the boss. Finally killed the last one of his little white things he has with him. Okay, yeah, I told you I wasn't going to make you listen to that anymore, but I lied. Anyway, about the story. Well, the best way to get into a story, I think, is to take you into a pivotal cutscene of this game. Let's go. The music in this scene is absolutely atrocious. That on the right, in the bottom right, standing over the dead body, wearing the black hood, is the bad guy named Void. Hmm, very creative. Also, um, we've seen this scene before. Black hooded figure with white face, and who looks to be marginally overweight, coming at main character's parents. Yes, in case you weren't able to figure out, Leor is Cytheus's father. Hmm, Darth Vader, aren't we? Actually, no. Leor is the benevolent father who sends his son away with a teleport spell. While basically allowing himself to be killed, it is assumed, by Void. Actually, in a later cutscene, um, the author pretty much tells you that Void kills his parents. How predictable! Okay, you wake up in a little forest. The game of this game really has not impressed me too much. Okay, then we have a little blonde girl with a white dress going to pick tree roots because that's what little blonde girls in white dresses do. And she notices you. I really want to get her eyes checked now because I'm wondering if she didn't see a little dude with blue hair sitting on leaves and forget it. Anyway, Cytheus finally introduces himself as Seth. Hmm. Oh, and the blonde girl's name is Rhea from Lorca, the town north from here. Alright, stop for a second. Lorca, in Fire Emblem 7, is the name of Lin's tribe. This isn't something anyone who's played that game will forget. This is a pretty major part of the storyline of that game. <clears throat> Here's the only problem. This isn't the only Fire Emblem 7 reference in this game. There's a character named Nils later on. So I think, even though the author denied that he took a lot of inspiration from Fire Emblem 7, I honestly have to say I think he's lying to me when he says that. 